Hello everybody and welcome to November Team Brief. So today we gave a brief hospital update. We covered the fact that we were at the HSJ Awards this week. It was a great privilege to represent all of you there as we were shortlisted for Provider of the Year Award. Now sadly we didn't win, but it was an amazing achievement to have been shortlisted in the first place. And I'm really looking forward to all the submissions for next year and having another opportunity to visit the awards. We covered the fact that the hospital, of course, is busy. We're moving towards Christmas. We're seeing higher numbers of attendance and admission through the hospital. And what we're seeing is a great response, as always, from all of you. Um, but just to remind you that we're working hard with the system partners to respond to that. And in particular, as we move towards Christmas, the winter planning is so very important and Tom Smearden gave a sense of what that's been looking like and really gave a call out to everybody to properly engage in some detail with the winter planning exercise that's being held um, towards the beginning of December. And then finally, we wanted to make you aware that the STP, Surrey Heartland Sustainability and Transformation Plan, has now been published and it's available for you all to have a look at. Now, the plan is really the submission that we have made to the Department of Health so it's not yet fully approved and it may yet change but it'll give you a sense of the direction of travel. Now we sent, spent the majority of Team Brief discussing how important feedback is and we heard from a number of clinicians and colleagues across the Trust around how they've been improving feedback mechanisms. So the main topic of discussion uh, for this month's team brief is closing the feedback loop. Now, we collect feedback from patients and from all of you in lots of different ways. But it worries me that we don't get great numbers of responses. And the reason this worries me is that we've really set ourselves and our vision up around our three key areas of delivering kind and compassionate care, delivering care that's safe and effective and without delay, and involving patients in the discussions and developing their care plans as partners and doing that consistently for every patient. Now, how are we going to know if we're successful in doing that? And I think we, our feeling has been that Getting patient feedback will help us know how well we're doing. It will help us attend to issues in real time and really help us connect better with our patients. Now, alongside that, hearing from all of you about what it's like to work here in the Trust is so very important. And of course, that sense of connectedness between patient feedback and staff feedback is very clear and there's a lot of evidence across healthcare around why those two things are very, very important. But when we look at the rates of feedback, whether that be patients or staff, we don't get as much as we would like. Now we're just coming to the end of the staff survey submission uh, period and we're just about to launch I Want Great Care across the whole organisation, which is our new uh, mechanism for securing patient feedback. Now, what we did in the room was ask a series of questions after we'd had some examples from others of how they'd improve feedback rates. But we were really interested to know, you know, why do patients find it difficult to feedback? Why do staff, colleagues feel concerned um, that their anonymity is at risk in terms of responding to the staff survey? And really how we could improve those response rates. And we had some great discussion with the team. Um, and we can summarize that information and start to think about what that means for how we plan this going forward. But the message is feedback, whether that's direct feedback from your colleagues and team or feedback from your um, patients is really important. And if you believe that as much as I do, I'm really looking forward to your support and help to improve that situation. 
Hi, I'm Rick Strang. I'm the lead for emergency care um, in the Trust at the moment. We've been struggling down in the emergency department to collect feedback from our patients to tell us how we're doing. We're really keen to get that feedback, but at the moment on the friends and family test, we're getting about 45 responses a month. And just to give that some context, we see about six and a half thousand adults. So just get 45 bits of feedback back doesn't really give us a picture of what's going on. So our challenge was how could we get our staff to give out the forms and encourage patients to give feedback to us? One of the things that we've done is that we've discovered that all of our staff carry a little stamper which they use in the medical notes. Whenever they write something in the notes, they stamp their name on it to say that they've done it. And what we've asked staff to do is take a collection of the friends and family forms and stamp their name on them. And then ha when they hand those forms out to the patient, at the end of the month when all the forms come back, we count up which member of staff has given out the most forms and that member of staff will get a prize. And the prize in the first month was a, an iPod. Um, and just to give an example of how much that's driven the change, um, we were, as I say, averaging about 45 responses a month. Um, but in October, when we started this, we got over 800 responses, about 869 in fact. Um, so it's driven a real change in what's happening. The other more subtle thing about this though is that if I'm the nurse that's giving you a slip of paper to ask you how our department's doing today and my name's on that slip of paper, I probably want the department to be doing pretty well before I do that. So there's a sense now there's a bit of ownership about the feedback that we're asking. So we're not asking a remote thing about how do you think we're doing. We've got that real individual attachment about how am I doing? How is our department doing? Because my name's on that bit of paper that I'm giving to you. And we're hoping that that will develop things more as we go forward. So the groups in the room had the opportunity to discuss and reflect on those questions and some of the key themes that emerged following the discussion um, I've really heard and understood. So ensuring that feedback mechanisms are straightforward and simple and easily accessible um, clearly is important. Making sure that we are able to demonstrate whether that be in relation to patient care and services or indeed the working environment for all of you, that you know we've heard the feedback and we've done something with it, we've made a difference, um, is clearly very important. And reassuring um, both patients and colleagues that the information is absolutely um, private, it's anonymous, and that no consequences will come following the provision of feedback and whether that be you know a sense as from a patient that their care may not be ha handled so well or indeed that a staff colleague member would be penalized for, for, for providing feedback we really want to hear what you think so please think about that some more please share your ideas and thoughts with us we'd be really really pleased to hear them and please keep getting getting securing asking for feedback and please keep giving us your feedback. Thank you for listening.